Hello and welcome to Chandler in Focus. I'm Vice Mayor Kevin Hartke, and our topic of discussion today is the sixth annual Chandler Chuck Wagon Cook-Off. You can tell we're talking about that because I've got my black hat out and my black bolo tie. They seem to only make it out for something related <laughs> to the Chuck Wagon event. My guests today are Dave McDowell, who is the president of Partners of Tumbleweed Ranch, and Tiffany Egnor, co-writer of the Education at the Chandler Museum. And Tiffany, did I say your last name right? Egnor, yep. Very good. I'm very glad to hear that. Well, welcome to our show today. And I'm excited to talk about this year's annual cook-off event. I've had the privilege of being a judge in the past. I've judged beans. I've judged steak. I've judged potato. I've judged desserts. <laughs> And it's been a, a great culinary experience. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be in town this year, so I'm going to uh, miss the fun and all the excitement that's going to happen at Tumbleweed Park. But before we get started, can I have both of you share your background with us and with our viewers? So tell us about yourselves. Tiffany, how about you first? Sure. So I'm the Curator of Education with the Chandler Museum in the city of Chandler. And I've been there just over three years. I've worked with the Chandler Chuck Wagon Cook-Off for the past three years, so this will be my fourth year. And at the museum, my role is to lead the educational programming that we do in the community. Um, that includes our field trip programming for elementary school students, our early childhood program, the Seatown Suitcase Club, which happens once a month at the museum. And then we also offer outreach materials and lesson plans for the teachers in the local community. And we do programs at other sites like the libraries where we do programs during the intercession breaks. Um, so we do a lot of things and the, the Chandler Chuck Wagon Cook-Off is really one of our signature events at the museum during the year. And it's one of my favorite things that we do in the community. And what's been your favorite food so far? At the Chuck Wagon? Yes. Um, definitely the meat. The meat is always the best. <laughs> the meat is always the best. Yeah. I agree with you. So, Dave, tell us about yourself. I was, uh, I'm a former city employee. Uh, I spent, uh, I believe, about 30 years with the city of Chandler in the Parks and Recreation area and retired in 2010. And uh, have been involved in uh, chuck wagon cooking since about 2000 and outdoor cooking uh, much, much longer than that, uh, probably around 50 years. So I kind of grew up in the mountains of Colorado um, with an outdoor cooking background and and so since I've retired I've uh, done a lot of the chuck wagon things and we were we were lucky enough to get the Ch Chandler event up and going six years ago we started with four wagons I think three or four and now we're up to 13 this year so it's been a gratifying experience and the partners of Tumbleweed Ranch is a nonprofit group that helps support the museum and the ranch and the event. Well, very good. I, I certainly like to cook a lot in camp, and my son-in-law is a self-proclaimed expert on Arizona mushrooms, so he hasn't oh. led me astray yet, so That's I'm still good. here to talk about it. <laughs> so for those who are not familiar with our, our Chuck wagon cook-off who perhaps have not had the opportunity to be there. Tell us what's going to go on that day. You, you've you talked about the, the wagons that are coming and so what's going to happen that day and what's all going to be involved? Well we've got uh, we've got really two days. Uh, Friday is not uh, as exciting as Saturday but the wagons will show up Thursday. They'll set up their camp. Uh, Friday we have a a panel of two or three judges that will go around and they judge each wagon and camp, camp for authenticity. And, and it's really based upon what's called a trail wagon category. And the trail wagons were those that went on the trail drives and the period of time we generally reference is 1866, right after the Civil War up through the turn of the century. So they're judging the camp and the app and all the cooking apparatus on that time frame. And uh, then each wagon on Saturday will prepare um, a complete meal of five items, meat, bread, beans, potatoes, and dessert. And each wagon prepares meals for, for 50 people 
We do sell tickets so the public can purchase one of those meals. They, they go pretty quickly, but uh, it, it's a great meal. Uh, there's a lot of good cooks there, and, uh, and it's really, um, really uh, an event that if you, most people have trouble getting five items on the table at a pre-appointed time, with a home kitchen, cooking, let alone cooking it over a wood fire with the unpredictability of the weather and the wood and all that. So it's an exciting event to just watch, especially if like you, you enjoy camping and want to see some real wood fire cooking, this is the place to do it. And there's quite an art, I know, of whether it's Dutch <coughs> ovens or other types of things uh, in getting that right temperature in which you, it seems like people have mastered the art almost to have as much control as they do in their own kitchens. I always find that amazing, the, how many uh, briquettes or how, how do you determine how hot your flame is. So it's, it's pretty amazing. It is. Mm -hmm. So when will the event be held this year? And tell us about the location. And you've had a background in making this happen too with your your days and experiences with the Chandler. So maybe you could give us a little history about okay. that as well. Okay, the event uh, will will kick off on the 6th and that's just the wagon judging. Um, and that day we also have a lot of things going on um, with regard to Western history. And um, at, at the Red Shed Theater, we've got uh, some folks coming to to do some historical presentations. Um, and then Saturday, the wagons will start their meal prep probably about 5.30 in the morning, getting the fires going. Um, and, and timing is the most, is the toughest element of that whole process, getting everything ready, because the, the, it has to be ready at noon for the judges and uh, if it's not ready, it doesn't count. So, um, but they will be prepar preparing those five five items. Uh, we give each wagon the same basic ingredients, and it's amazing how many variations you'll see out there in terms of desserts, um, the way the meat is prepared, um, and the breads. So it's it's quite interesting that way, and it's held at at Tumbleweed Ranch, which is a part of Tumbleweed Park. And the park, uh, Chandler had always talked uh, when I came in 85 about wanting a 200-acre a park, and they mentioned Kiwanis, and they mentioned other major parks in the area. And Chandler uh, achieved that with the acquisition of Tumbleweed Park. And when the park was being developed, we, we set aside a corner of that park to preserve the agricultural heritage of Chandler, and that's what Tumbleweed Ranch is all about. Tiffany, I'm sure, will talk more about that as we get into it, but that's kind of the history of it. So, Tiffany, tell us about that. How does this event tie into the Chandler Museum? Yeah, so the Chandler Museum started this event, as Dave mentioned, in 2010, and the event has grown quite a bit since that time. Um, we started with four wagons. This year we have 13 wagons. And part of the Chandler Museum's mission is to preserve the cultural heritage of uh, our community. And this event really does help do that. And it gives people a firsthand experience, an up close and personal look at Western history. Um, they get to experience you know, the cooking and the sights and the sounds and the tastes, all of those things. They get to see the chuck wagons up close. The chuck wagon teams often come in period clothing. Um, so it's really a great experience for the community. And, you know, a lot of times people think of cattle drive history as sort of a Texas history topic, but there were cattle drives that were here in Arizona. There were chuck wagons that were here in Arizona that cooked for cowboys on the ranch. And so it gives us that opportunity to share this piece of Western history with our community. Well, very good. And tell us a little bit more about the history of, of Tumbleweed Ranch. David mentioned that mm -hmm. in terms of preserving our agricultural history. So 
what else goes on there that, that has yeah. continued that legacy? Well, we really have to thank Dave for his vision and leadership, um, helping establish Tumbleweed Ranch as a site. We're so grateful to have it. It's something that's really unique in our community. Um, so Tumbleweed Ranch is a 16 acre site. It's in the southeast corner of Tumbleweed Park, like David mentioned, which is at the corner of McQueen and Germain um, streets. And Tumbleweed Ranch is where the Chandler Museum preserves our agricultural history of the East Valley. And it is our, the museum's outdoor site. We have our main facility over by the Chandler Fashion Center and Tumbleweed Ranch is our outdoor facility. The museum's collections of all of our agricultural equipment and artifacts, those are all stored out at Tumbleweed Ranch and they're on view for people to look at. So they're things from ranchers and farmers that were here in the area, equipment, tractors, um, a cotton picker that people can see, uh, those machines and those tools that were used. And we also have a historic home. It's a 1917 kit home. It's called the McCroskey House. It was a local residence here in Chandler. And that house is really a crucial part of our field trip programs. So one of the big things that the museum does at the ranch is our field trip programs for elementary school students. And on those field trips, students get to visit four different stations where they learn about what life was like in Chandler 100 years ago. And they really have the opportunity to do interactive activities and see demonstrations and get the chance to do history rather than just sit and hear about history. Um, so it's a great program that we have out there. Um, there are things that go on throughout the, the year at the ranch. The Ostrich Festival is a big event that happens out there that a lot of people are familiar with. So those races happen on those grounds. Uh, so if, if you've been to the Ostrich Festival and to the races, you, you've been at Tumbleweed Ranch on the site there. And that's one of our larger attractions in Chandler and even to the Tumbleweed Ranch area, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So uh, with the educational programs mentioned, uh, I'm assuming that kids are, are getting out of school on field trips. Is it so? Is it just Chandler schools? And, and if so, what grades and who else is represented? Yeah, with so we have quite a few schools from Chandler Unified School District, but we also have schools that come from Kyrene District, as well as private schools and charter schools and homeschool groups. The field trips are open to any school that wants to come. And usually we have third grade students on those field trips, but they're open for second graders through fourth graders. Um, last year, we even had a, a school that came from Queen Creek Unified School District. So we are starting to broaden the reach of those field trips just a little bit. Well, that's excellent. Yeah. So Dave, tell us a little bit more about your personal experiences with the Chuck Wagon Cook-Off and how did you get involved and, I, and how did you acquire, purchase your own Chuck Wagon and is there anything unique about that? Well, I had a good friend who was a mentor that, um, that taught me a lot about Chuck Wagon cooking and he happened to be at an event in Scottsdale, a Chuck Wagon cook-off one year and called me and said, you've got to come out here and see this. So I made the mistake of going out, and the cooks there just seemed to be having too much of a good time. And uh, so I borrowed a wagon a few times, and my kids and I competed in a couple events. The last time we borrowed a wagon or rented a wagon, the wagon never showed up. So I sat there most of two days without a wagon. And at that point in time, I decided if I was going to continue, I needed to jump in and get a wagon. So I wound up buying a wagon on eBay and had to explain to my wife why I was going to Indiana to pick this wagon up. And then uh, once we got it back here, my son and I, it was a farm wagon, like many of the chuck wagons were. And we did, built the chuck box and did all the work to really turn it into a chuck wagon. So that's, uh, we've been, we began competing with that wagon in 2001. And, um, and it's been quite a fun time over the past years competing in events throughout the Southwest. We, we've gone to uh, Cheyenne, Cheyenne Frontier Days. We've done a number of Texas events as well as local events in New Mexico and Arizona. We're assuming that you didn't rent a, a team of horses to haul that out here from Indiana. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. I uh, borrowed a trailer and went back and and my daughter and I brought it out. Well, sounds like fun. So, so 
For those of you who are joining us, I am Vice Mayor Kevin Hartke, and you're watching Chandler in Focus. My guests today are Dave McDowell, who's the president of the Partners of Tumbleweed Ranch, and Tiffany Egnor, who is with the Chandler Education and Chandler, uh, with the Chandler Museum. And we're discussing the upcoming Chuck Wagon Cook-Off event, which is occurring on the first weekend of November, which uh, the actual cook-off is on my birthday this year. Oh. So I'm kind of doubly <laughs> sad that uh, no one would be making me a peach cobbler uh, pie with a candle in it or something, yeah. but uh, maybe next year. So with your cooking, do you have a specialty that you are known for in particular? Well, I always thought of it as being probably uh, pasoli, which is a uh, New Mexican pork hominy dish, or chicken fried steak. But looking back last night through some through the past history, um, we've won more first places in in biscuits and cornbread, uh, followed closely by beans than we ever have in meat. So I, I guess the judges have said <laughs> it's biscuits and yeah. cornbread. I'd agree with or that. Beans. Yeah. His uh, biscuits are delicious. Wow, very nice. So I think that's that's probably <laughs> it. Um, we haven't done as well in birthday cakes or cobblers or birthday cobblers. Well, I did <laughs> notice last year. I, I think one of the our our guests. To this show had made some brownies well, I think with the jalapeno kick to them so yes that, yeah. that would serve it so <laughs> tell us about the teams involved in this year's competition and where they are from and is there anything unique or any of the types of food you gave kind of general categories but I was surprised how good those brownies were last year so what are some of the other unique foods well as Tiffany mentioned we've got 13 teams this year um, We've got a team from Montana, one from um, Nevada, um, people from New Mexico, people from basically the four corners of Arizona. Mm -hmm. We've got a White Mountain team. We've got a team from Southern Arizona, a couple teams from the Verde Valley and Rimrock, um, and then uh, folks from Phoenix. So we've got a, a great cross-section of some very good cooks, and uh, and they will, like I mentioned earlier, all start with the same basic ingredients, but as far as meat goes, you could see everything. We give them all a whole top round. Uh, they have to then cut that up and, and prepare that uh, however they want. So you'll see everything from stew to uh, pan-fried steaks to um, roasts, and as far as desserts go, they range from bread pudding to cobblers are a very popular thing, but uh, there's a wide variety of things. Um, so each wagon uh, does try, tries to strive to be uh, a little creative in the use of what we give them. They have to they have to prepare it as it would have been prepared in the late 1800s using things that would have been available then. We do allow some canned foods like canned tomatoes. We've added canned peppers to that list since having fresh peppers is a is a challenge for the health regulations. But other than that, everything is prepared from scratch so to speak, and um, from so what, those ingredients. What are some of the more um, unique ingredients that either of you have seen that have been brought to this that are certainly circa the time, but, but you were surprised in one way, shape, or form? Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. Yeah, they really, they really do have to stick to the list of ingredients that we give them, and they can add in some spices and things like that, um, but they really do keep true to what was available at the time. You will have wagons that, you know, if we give them dried apples for their dessert, they might also add in some other fresh fruit or something else into it so it stands out from the rest of the crowd as far as what's on the menu for all of the other wagon teams. But. I think I think the titles they give some of their dishes yeah. are are 
they are the most interesting thing. Yeah. They come up with some very creative names for potatoes or uh, beans or any of the other five items. So, and when, yeah. it, when the event attendees arrive at the event, they get to see all of the menus for each of the wagons, and that's how they decide what meal ticket they want to purchase. So they buy the meal ticket for the wagon that they want to eat at. So those menus are really what sells the meal for that for that wagon team. So the more creative that they are with their uh, yeah. names of their their food items, or the more uh, delicious it sounds, the more tickets that wagon usually sells. So this is a, a pretty unique event, obviously that we're glad that has been brought to Chandler. How how in the Southwest or in Arizona? You'd mentioned one in Scottsdale. Are these unique? in the sense there, there's just a handful, and why should people come to our event? Well, the whole Texas, or the whole chuck wagon rebirth, uh, so to speak, started in Texas. There are a lot of Texas events. Um, the, the event in Scottsdale, unfortunately, is no longer being held, so Chandler is, is the largest event in the state, and uh, we definitely think it's the best event in the state. Of course, <laughs> there are there are some others, but uh, but there are only uh, they're growing. Uh, there are a number of small events in in like Wilcox and Sonoida and places like that. But this is probably the biggest and the best, mm -hmm. where you're going to see uh, the most wagons, uh, the most cooks. And each wagon will have from one to four cooks uh, involved in the meal preparation. And we have a youth cook-off uh, on Saturday also, where we have kids involved in doing a cobbler with one of the wagon teams. So it's a, it's a great family event uh, for all ages and all interests. And it, uh, it appeals to foodies as well as just campers like yourself that want to see how food's prepared over an open fire or maybe get some recipe ideas and so it's a great family event and it's free mm -hmm. oh, very and, good. and one of the unique things about our event compared to some of the others is the chuck wagon cooking is really the center of the event whereas things like cheyenne frontier days or in rio doso they have other activities that are going on and a chuck wagon the chuck wagon cooking is just a portion of it Ours, that's really the focus. So it is unique in that sense that people are really coming for those meals and for that cooking. And it's always a fun. The weather in the beginning of November in November is usually very good, although we've had a little bit of inclement mm -hmm. weather and a little bit of heat in the afternoons. Yeah. Yeah. So how long has it been since we've expanded in terms of the youth cook-offs? I know at times we've experimented with other breakfasts with them. So how has that program developed? Well, we started out. Uh, we started out adding the, the youth cook-off was a challenge to fit in schedule-wise. So we started out with it on Sunday afternoon, uh, and to get folks there, we did a, a breakfast where the wagons prepared breakfast Sunday. We're not doing that this year. We moved the youth cook-off back to Saturday, and uh, we've got. Uh, I believe at last count, 13 mm -hmm. kids registered for this event. I think the first year we had just uh, three or but, four. Right, yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's grown and it's important to get kids involved in this part of history and get them cooking over an open fire. Well, I certainly agree. It's uh, part of my childhood as a Boy Scout was uh, peppered with jamborees and certainly mm -hmm. camping events that probably had a few huge imprint in what I love to do today. So it's, yeah. uh, this is a, a great opportunity. So I'm glad. Mm -hmm. So anything else you'd like to say, either of you, about the, the, the cook-off this year? Yeah, on, on November 5th, we're going to be uh, down at Sibley's West in downtown Chandler. Um, we hope to be doing some samples down there. Um, I'm going to be doing a book signing of Cal Camp Cookery, um, and we'll have some merchandise for the event there and information all about the event. So if folks come down to Farmer's Market, 
and uh, stroll on over to Sibley's between four and six, and and we'll uh, tell them all about the event. And you didn't bring a copy of your book here that I could purchase <laughs> with the hand sign? Uh, no, but I, I can work that out. All right. Uh, we're pr I'm pretty proud of it because it did win the uh, Will Rogers Medallion Award for the Best Western Cookbook in 2013. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, I... Unfortunately, I, I will be out of town that day as well, but I, I would look forward to, to experimenting with some of your best recipes. So. Okay. Well, Tiffany, anything you'd like to say? I'll just add a, I'll add a few comments on getting tickets to the event. Great. So for people that want to attend the event, parking to the event and, and admission are both free. And then tickets for the meals are $12 each, and that includes the five-course meal of meat, beans, potatoes, bread, and dessert. And those tickets go on sale on Saturday, November 7th, so the day of the event. The gates open at 9 a.m. and tickets go on sale at 10 a.m. So people have a chance to come in, check out those menus, decide what wagon they want to purchase from, and then get their tickets. And then the meal is served at noon. So if people show up at 9, we usually have a bunch of other booths or entertainment type right. venues there. Tell us about that. What else is available? Yeah, so there's other vendors that are there. In the morning on Saturday, there will be some cooking demonstrations so people can watch those. We've actually set it up this year so that while you're standing in line, you'll be able to see those cooking demonstrations from where you're standing. And then one of the new and exciting things that we're offering this year is our Choose Your Own Adventure Chuck Wagon Cattle Drive Exhibit. And that's um, going to be set up like a maze with a storyline. And event attendees will go along the storyline of being on a cattle drive. They'll have a chance to sort of make choices about the, the story path that they want to choose, like a choose your own adventure book, and experience some different activities and things as they go through that. So they'll be able to do that in the morning as well. Great. And there's usually some other, uh, other food availability in case mm -hmm. people uh, are not fortunate enough to, right. uh, to get a ticket. Right, we do have some food vendors that will be there as well. And some music entertainment, I mm -hmm. recall. So yeah, Pioneer, Sunset Pi Pioneer Pepper and the Sunset Pioneers will be there um, right. this year. So, Dave, any last thoughts you'd like to share with us? No, thank you for allowing us to come and talk about it on your, your time here. Well, great. Vice Mayor, we appreciate yeah, it. thank you. Well, I want to thank you both for coming and for your enthusiasm about the Chuck Wagon Cook-Off. And I hope you enjoyed watching this segment of Chandler in Focus. And I hope that you will again join us at this year's event at Tumbleweed Park. I'm Vice Mayor Kevin Hartke, and I'll see you soon at my next show on Chandler in Focus.